Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to today's video, guys. I am Jack with my girl Budgeting, and on today's video, we are going to be tackling my weekly budget sheet. Um, so this is basically based off of my weekly paid income that I do get as an employee. So um, we're going to go ahead and plan out for the week what income I have in and what I have available as well as getting down to that zero base budgeting. This budget sheet is available on my Etsy guys. It is the budget 101 starter kit that I do have available now on my Etsy. You get this along with multiple pages of let me go ahead and so it is the uh, starter kit budget and I just printed this on the other sheet because I already used up one, this one in here but it's a budget starter kit you basically have your checklist of your bank statement budget sheet spend no no you have your spend and no spend tracker your cash teller savings tracker weekly savings sinking funds monthly savings debt down confession and completed savings tracker um, and so it comes with this along with the savings savings to sinking so when you've completed your savings you can use this as a tracker to see what you've saved so far especially if you do like a sink uh, save to sink and um, all your savings go into a sinking fund somewhere this is a good way to track it you have your bank statement to start that process of looking at your three months of bank statements to categorize the things that you want to eliminate and then you also have a debt down confession basically it's all your what you want to do with your debt it's kind of a little graph that you can use to set that goal um, for your debt and then you can break it down into each of these and then you have your budget sheet this one of course has been used and then we have monthly savings so this is from each month how much you've saved because um, I know I like to track how much I saved in a month on a monthly basis total so this really helps you then you have your cash teller so if you get your wallet your variable expenses that you're going to pull from your bank this is, can break down your cash for that then you have your sinking funds so this is just a way to list out your sinking funds the goal and start off in the months for that then you have your savings in place so basically you list out all your savings and how much you want to put to each of these savings um, this really helps whenever you have your like I'll show you here shortly how much I'll have left in savings and I can basically break that money down even further into each of the savings that I'm going to be playing. And then we have more sinking funds. This is on a month to month track to see how much you're either building up or you know if you're deducting weekly savings. So it's basically giving you a slot uh, to track like your day-to-day -day savings but I um, I made it as a weekly so you can do it for the week I mean this one has lasted me out the whole month especially if I cut back on savings um, so you could use this for the whole month and then the remainder of the months this I printed it off on the wrong months but that's okay so basically that is it guys so that's what we're gonna work on here for our budget sheet okay so let me put this away if you are new to my channel and wondering what do I do and what I'm about I am Jack with my girl budgeting and basically I am working my way to become debt free with that I do fund savings and budget myself along with keeping myself accountable by doing things like this but also doing things within the community that way I stay focused and stay on track to become um, debt free but also not live paycheck to paycheck okay guys so let's go ahead and get started I'm gonna go ahead and try to zoom in I have a new kind of setup so I'm able to zoom in without messing with anything so it's really nice but anyways guys we're gonna go ahead and I have my 
And this one I printed front and back. This will go into my binder once I've uh, got it ready for you guys. So we have 10, 12. I'm up to date. This is zero based budgeting, so I am going to every dollar assign a, the, my dollars to every um, category until I hit that total of a zero. Okay. So for income, we have um, my pay, my weekly pay, and then what we had um, not from my son, he, he does help with the monthly payment, so this is what he paid for. So we're gonna do 267, 48, 39, 37, I think that's what we had. Oh, no, 39. Can you guys see that? Yeah, okay. So that giving, us a total of and that gives me the thirteen oh four eighty seven that we have to play with and put them into each of these categories, guys. I do have a spend, no spend tracker right here. So this is a way that, like, especially that I'm weekly, I can go and see what I've spent and jot down what I've spent for the week um, to help me with my no spend. Uh, also, um, so this just keeps you, it's all right here for you, and then you can use this as a way to save if you're doing the no spend. Um, so we're going to start with 1304.87. We're going to start with what is due currently. So we have my water bill. And that is going to be $100. And then we have my Jeep, because I do have a Jeep. And that is $497.96, I believe. 46 46 and then we have electricity which is reliant at 75 and what else and that is it technically I could have put um, the Jeep on my debt um, because it is a debt a finance loan that I am working to pay off but I just put it because it is one of my main category, main bills that I have. Ooh, and I'm not even showing you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and put um, my foundation, my bathroom remodel. That is another debt I have that I had gotten way before I started budgeting. And so that is what I am paying for this week on bills. Okay, so. Let's calculate that. Here, let me zoom out. Okay, so we have 100 plus 497 plus 6 plus 2. This twos on this is work. So we have 898.46 total on bills. Now we're going to take our total. So we're going to 898.46 minus 1304.87 gives us a total of 406.41. So from there, we're going to go into our debt and our the, cap, the only credit card I have that is due this week is my capital one and that is going to be $72 so we put 72 so we'll do so that gives me a 334 
keep forgetting to zoom in, guys. 334.41. Or, sorry if you guys are hearing motorcycles. It is Saturday. It is a busy, beautiful day. So, it sounds like motorcycle bikers are out enjoying the weather. All right. So, that means 334.41 is going to be going into my expenses. Now, as you can see, guys, one thing I don't have in here on this one is I don't have a savings category. Typically, I would. Or people would have sinking funds and savings what I do with this is basically I break down my wallet for the expenses that I have that means these are my spend this is the money I'm going to be allowed to spend as far as cash and then um, whatever I'm left over is where I'm going to put my savings here at the bottom once I zero balance my budgeting sheet that $89, say, whatever my savings is going to be at that time, uh, whenever I uh, get down to this last part, this is where I will break down each of my categories on my savings that I um, have. I have a lot of savings sheets that I work on, so I see no point in trying to break it down here because I I ha used to have it on my other budget sheet but I saw that there was no use to it because I was going to break it down into another sheet like those saving sheets that I have so I just give me a running total of that savings then I use that to move it over into those saving sheets whenever I get ready to um, to schedule plan out my savings for the week okay so that's how that works. Um, so that's why you guys will not see anything with sink, sinking funds because I don't do my sinking funds. My sinking funds are will eventually be put in play when I do my sinking funds showdown. And that's usually every three months I do that. After I've completed um, savings, that's what that money goes into the sinking funds. So that's why you don't see sinking uh, funds category or a savings category on this but I wanted to I felt like having a spend and a no spend tracker on here was more important um, because you guys can start you know like you track all your money and you have this no spend and spend tracker and you can see you can also start catching how much you're spending throughout the week if maybe you were like, oh, forget it, I'm gonna use my debit card. You go and spend that 50 bucks to go eat out to eat or something. And at the end of this, you can look at what you've spent and you can play, look, if you're overspending, which you should be, because you should never spend more than what you bring into the table. And so that's what, why I included a spend no spend tracker you can use it for your nose your spending or your no spend or you can say like today is 10 12 i did not spend any cash today so i get to give myself credit for that or if you went to say you went to starbucks and you went and bought you a coffee then you spent six dollars there you can track it that for the dates and put your dates here and so this is just more why i created it this way for for budgeters um, it's just a new way to look at what you even if you are bi-weekly you can still track your spending within that or monthly you know just use it because you, you have everything right here on one page for you okay all right so let's move on so now we're gonna plan out my um, my wallet so what we're going to do is we have my expenses are going to be groceries for my wallet and I'm giving myself $100 for that. My gas for the week is $40. Then we have my pets and I give them $25 and I'm giving myself uh, $20. 
uh, for dining out. So 20 for dining and $10 for um, shopping. I need to do better with this zoom and zoom out. <laughs> Uh, shopping is getting ten dollars, and this gives you. This starts the process of getting you, giving you that res restraint. You're like, this is where you can start restraining yourself from overspending or pulling out that debit card. I hardly ever use my debit card unless I mean I'm like, you know, taking that risk. But if I don't have the cash for it, I will not buy it. So this just gives helps you keep it controlled at this point when you have this. It might not seem like a lot for $10, but you have the $20 for dining. You might not use all the $20, and you might find that you, well, I'm going to spend $12 on whatever I'm buying at the store or something. At least you know that that's there, okay? This is the money you can play with. You can always adjust it. Maybe you don't spend $100, but you need, you know, $50 for your gas and you only spend $80 for gas, I mean for groceries, then you can move at that $20 to any of these categories. This is always adjustable. It just depends on your needs and what you feel like you need. And you will start learning, you know, how much you will need. I mean, I might not use $25 on my pets this week, but I have it just in case. This is more for just in case. It's typically for their snacks. Um, if I need like cat litter for my my cats, um, this is usually where I use put that money toward. But if I don't use it, then I can always adjust it to something else. And then whatever you can also at the end of this, if you don't use any of that money, you roll that money over into your savings. You don't you or you can you put it back in your wallet. And say okay. I only spent $80 here, so that $20, I'm going to go ahead and use it, add it to the next week's um, budgeting, budget plan, and say you have, you know, you're only going to allot yourself $50 for your groceries that week, because you, if you spent more on your groceries one week, you typically don't spend that much on the following week. So you spend $50, and that's just probably because you decide to make a meal out of the $80 that you didn't meal plan for. Um, you can put that 20 into that, you know, $50, or you can just move it into your savings. Use it to be added to the savings for the next uh, week that you plan. And that's how that works, guys. Okay, so from here we go ahead and take away 100 and always do that. 40. 20, 25, 20, and then 10. Okay, guys. So, that means, so what I decided to do this go round as well is I went ahead and left $50 in the bank as bank buffer. So, I just wanted that bank buffer in there. I'm telling you for those moments that you're just like, okay, what if I, uh, you know, something comes up and I, I need like just like $30, but I don't have it from what I needed on my cash. It, it really helps to have that bank buffer um, just, just in case. I would say like use it as an emergency. You're not gonna touch it, and then you can, if you don't use that $50, you can always pull that and put it towards savings. And so that's what I'm doing for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and do $50 that I left in the bank. I had already accounted for it in my expenses, but I'm leaving it. I left it in the bank. I didn't go and get it cash withdrawn. So then we're gonna go ahead and do 50. And so that gives me a total. So we have, this is one. I think it's 
It's supposed to be 195. No, two. Six. Seven, eight, nine. 14. So 245, that's right. 245 is what we have. Um, total, and then minus the 72 cents. Oh, wait, wait. No, yeah, and then minus the 334 that we have left over on the carryover from the debt. It gives me a total balance of $89.41. Okay, so that is where we are. We're not yet there at the zero, guys. We haven't made it to zero, but this is where we're going to start calculating all of the each category down here to get our zero balance. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do our income is $13.04. 87. Our bills are a total of 898. 46. Our debt is $72. Our expenses is 245. And our savings is 89.41. So now we go do the, the lovely calculation. 1304 87 minus 898 46 minus 72 minus 245 and then we are at 8941. Oh guys, sorry. So we are at 89.41 after I've calculated all of those. Let me do it over here. I don't know that you can see it. It's very, it's not in view, which is where we are here at the savings. So now I take my 89.41 of savings and we are at a total of $0. So our total balance was 13. Oh, and that's for no spend, no and spend. So you can use this last one is for no spend or spend, and you can use that to track. Also, if you did um, go outside of your expenses here, this will help you see how much you went over on your expenses on your budgeting. Okay. And so that is what I'm going to go and use to go pull from the bank. So I'm going to get my 245 for my wallet. Well, minus the 50, so that's 195 for my wallet, and then plus the $89 for my savings this week. So that is all the money I'm going to be applying this week. So typically I try to do my mini savings Monday and the hop as well as um, my Halloween savings and then if I can get if I can stretch it then I'll add my uh, $20 for my Thursday randomizer so then I will plan this out this will be where I have to plan out my savings in this coming week and I'll have a video for that on the next one. But yeah, guys, so this is my weekly budget plan. Use this as a guide. I know I gave you guys on my last video for uh, the episode two of budgeting, of how to budget, or budgeting 101. Um, I did give y'all a simple budget sheet that you can follow, um, and you can just use this as a guide to determine how you're going to play out your income for the week or bi-weekly or however often you get paid um, but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up let's go ahead and do hashtag sheet for today's video just lets me know you guys um 
watch all the way up to this point. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, guys, so that way you can take part in what I do within my channel. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you back your day. Much love to you all, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.